Now there's been a moment in all of our lives where we ordered something really cute on the internet. We were super excited when it arrived just to open it up and show our girlfriends this cute new thing we got. But after we show them, we realize she's a bit of a klepto and she steals all your stuff, including your hoodie and your varsity jacket. Maybe, I don't know. But she also parades around the house in panda themed makeup with panda stickers on her face going on about how she's going to turn this new keyboard into the holy trinity of pandas. You know, it happens to everybody, maybe? Or is that just a me problem? Well, it might be just a me problem, but regardless, she did it. And she keeps talking about the holy trinity of pandas. So, let's see what she came up with. So, this is the mini panda 64 from Epimaker. And what I was saying was partially true. She did parade around the house saying that she was going to build the Holy Trinity of Pandas. Or at least she had the idea that I was going to build it. So this is it. We're going to start off with the Mini Panda 64. The Mini Panda 64 is a 60% hot swap acrylic RGB mechanical keyboard kit. Uh, it's more of a bare bones kit. You will need your own switches and your own keycaps for this. But this is what it comes with. Your USB-C cable and then the keyboard itself with plate mount stabs. It's really cute and surprisingly really affordable. Uh, on Amazon, you can get it as low as $29. Getting it through Epimaker, you are going to pay around 50, but it's on Amazon Prime right now for 29, at least at the time of this recording. Jumping into it, this keyboard is built with layers of acrylic. It's individual layers, so it's actually really easy to take apart. It's also fully hot swappable and it's programmable via via or via 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 either way it's got a really deep usb-c port so be careful for any custom cables or anything like that and then as you can see here it's just four simple screws to undo all of the layers to undo the layers you just simply grab a phillips screwdriver here we'll use our sonic screwdriver you just take out these long screws on each side there's two per side once you take those out, you can start separating your layers. And while we're at it, we'll go ahead and start taking out our screws for our plate and PCB so we can remove everything all together all at once. Once you have everything unscrewed, now it's just simply taking them off layer by layer. This is really simple. Although I would put it down in the system, maybe upside down or number them as you want to put them back on the same order you took them off. This can be a little bit confusing. Also, since the third layer is your plate, that have your stabs in it. So make sure you also put that on in the same location. I know it's a telltale sign when you're stacking them back together if they're set up wrong, but it can be kind of confusing because everything is so transparent. So just make sure you pay attention when you're taking them off and separating them. So you put them back together properly. Now, when it comes to the layered acrylic, I kind of really like it. It's not only simple and easy to use, but it's also simple for somebody coming into the keyboard hobby and has never modded a keyboard before. It also comes with this nice foam on the PCB and a fully hot swappable PCB, which again are both really nice touches for anybody that's new to the hobby. Here you can see the hot swap sockets and you have north facing RGB, which I know a deal breaker for some, but not for me personally. Once you remove all that, you'll come to the bottom of the layers. The bottom layers are a bit different than the top layers due to these half size layers. These half size layers provide a nice angled tilt for the keyboard so that it doesn't have any adjustable feet. This will be a better typing angle for people that are using it as their daily keyboards. Now, while we reassemble our layers, I do want to say that I've tape modded our PCB. Unfortunately, my camera died in the middle of tape modding and I didn't realize it, so I didn't get footage of it. But I applied two layers of painter's tape to the bottom of our PCB because we wanted to make this board more poppy. Moving on to the case, this is where we're going to add our sound dampening foam. And typically we would use EVA foam because I really like EVA foam, but not today. This is not what we're using. I know what you're thinking. What and why? Well, let me tell you why. I used EVA foam and found out that four millimeters of EVA foam was too much EVA foam. I also didn't like that I could see the purple clearly through the bottom of the case and the size of the case. I thought it took away the aesthetic too much. So this is what we did instead. We went back to the drawing board and found out that the packing foam that came in the keyboard box itself actually fit this crevice perfectly, like exactly perfectly. 
So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna measure it out and we're gonna cut a strip to fill this void. The reason I wanna do this is because I don't want a random hollow void that may change the sound when typing on that part of the board itself. Now, honestly, this can be solved with a number of different things. And you can always still use the EVA foam here. But I really like the fact that this was white and it matched the acrylic better. It also happened to fit perfectly. So that was also a bonus and a win. So we'll just trim it down to size and make sure it all fits. And we'll move on to the next step. Now for the upper portion of this case, we're gonna use PE foam, or it's also called packing foam or foam roll. Uh, this is really simple, it's really cheap, it's really affordable. And most of the time it comes with keyboards itself. This however did not, but I had a big foam roll. So we're just gonna trim it down to size. We're gonna put it in between the PCB and the case. This will help just a little bit and make it a little bit more poppy. I also use this across the top of the PCB as well to help achieve the sound profile we're looking for, which is that nice poppy sound. Now with our foam in and our acrylic layers installed, we'll go ahead and grab our plate and our PCB. We're gonna secure our PCB back to our plate as well before inserting it. And then we're just gonna put it all back together like so. Once you have this done, we can move on to the next steps of reassembling the top of the case. This is simply putting your layers back on as you took them off. Remember, this is the portion that would come in handy if you numbered them or laid them face down so you know which direction they go on. Once you have them all lined up, you'll simply screw your four screws back into each side. You'll be good to go. All right, now let's talk about these stabilizers. The stabilizers this board came with no lube at all. They were completely bone dry and they were a bit rattly in the little test I did. So we're gonna need to fix that. Here, we're gonna go ahead and check to make sure that our bar is balanced, which it is. So we can move on to lubing. For this, we're gonna take apart our, sta our stabilizer housings. We're gonna grab a little bit of 205 and we're gonna simply apply a little layer of 205 on each wall of the housing. Remember, you don't want too much here, but you also wanna make sure that it's evenly coated. So just make sure you do a few swipes on each side to make sure you have it spread evenly. Remember, you can always go back and add lube. Though it can be time consuming, but it's easier to add lube than it is to take away lube. It's also less messy. So remember, you just want an even glossy coat. No big globs or anything like that. Once we spread it on the walls of our housing, we're also gonna go ahead and spread it on our stabilizers inserts as well. This we're gonna do on each side. Again, just a small amount, but make sure it's an even coat on each side. I try to focus on doing three to four brush strokes on each side, and as long as we have an even glossy coat, we're good to go. We're not looking for any large white globs or anything like that. Just an even coat all the way around for the best results. Once you're satisfied with that and you've done all of them, it's time to reinsert your stem back into the housing. To do so, remember it's two holes in the front and one hole in the rear. Our housing has one hole in the front, which will line up with our two holes in the front of our stem. Once you put them back in, it'll be ready for the bar. So repeat this process with each one of your housings and you'll be good to go. Remember, two hole front, one hole rear for the stem, lines up with the one hole front, no hole rear of the housing. Now for our bar. Our bar's a bit of a different story. For this, I really like using dielectric grease. I do know that some people use 105, but I just prefer dielectric grease. For that, I simply insert the tip of my bar just past the curve, and then I reinsert it into the housing. To reinsert the housing, you simply stick in at a vertical angle, and then we'll turn it 90 degrees and clip it back into place. Now rinse and repeat, and you'll be good to go. Now it's time to move on to switches. These are the MMD Holy Panda switches from EpoMaker. They are a 62 gram, three pin tactile switch. 62 grams being on the heavier side of actuation. They are a three pin switch, so they'll work with any board that's three pin or five pin, which is nice. They have a palm stem and a PC nylon housing on both sides. Once we open them up, you can see that we wanna focus on both sides here. We're gonna lube these sides as well as the center post. We're gonna avoid anything up front. If you lube anything up front, you're gonna lose a tactile feel. You wanna avoid that for tactile switches, pretty much all tactile switches. 
as well as clicking switches, but we don't really lube those much. We're gonna grab a small amount of 205. We'll do three brush strokes on each side, and then we'll insert into the middle post and we'll lube in there as well. Remember, you want your lube to be like a ninja. You want it to be there, but you don't want it to be seen. So make sure you use a small amount. We're gonna do the same thing for the stem itself. We're gonna lube each side with a small layer of 205. Just a few brush strokes on each side. We'll do the trick. Then we'll move on to the center post. And we'll do a few brush strokes on there as well. This isn't always needed, but I know these felt really scratchy. So I want to make sure they have the best chance of feeling good. While we're at it, we're going to go ahead and bag lube our springs. We're going to dump all of our springs in a bag, as well as 15 drops of super lube. You can do more or less. I like 15 drops for 60%. Once we do that, We'll just shake, shake, shake for about three minutes. Make sure it's all shaken up and evenly coated. Now, there's a couple of things I'd like to note with these. I put these all back together and something crazy happened. The housing here actually cracked as well as these feet broke off. I've never had the clips or the housing ever break. I've lubed thousands of switches and I've never seen this and it didn't happen once or twice. It happened on four switches. That's crazy. So be warned that it can happen with the MMDs. I don't know if I got a bad batch or if it's just unique to these, but it happened to me. So just be careful. Maybe if you do order MMD Holy Pandas, order some extras. I would like to note that I did make sure that I sound tested my stabs first to make sure they're all tuned and sounded good, which I was pretty happy with the results. So we moved on to putting our switches in. With all our switches in, now it's keycap time. And this is bringing up the Trinity part, the tri part, the three part, the three part panda. These, you guessed it, are panda keycaps. And they're puddings. And they're PBT, and they're actually pretty thick. They are an ASA profile, so they're a little bit higher, a little bit taller. And I like that because of the low profile of this board. This board is a little shorter than most of my other boards. So we wanted to make sure that we gained up some of that height, a little bit taller of a keycap profile. Here you can see it's pretty thick and I really like the transparency. Also like that she chose the black and the white to kind of offset so much of the white of the keyboard. The legends are very clear and it's a full set. This is 120 keys and it'll support a full size as well as the 60, of course, that we're working with. And not to mention that if you're building a Q keyboard, you have to have a cute artisan keycap. And this one, she calls the Uppy Panda because it looks like he needs uppies. It's really cute. It's ABS and resin, and it's got this cute panda inside of it. Putting it all together, this is what you get. The cutest holy trinity of panda keyboard I've ever seen. It's adorable, and her idea came to life, and it worked out really well. You have the mini panda from Epic Maker, you have the holy pandas, uh, and then you have panda keycaps. And it's adorable. It doesn't really work aesthetically for my setup, but her setup, it's gorgeous. It looks really cool, but not the doxer, so I didn't want to put her setup in the video. But this is it. And now that we've built it, let's hear it.
All right, now that we've heard it and built it, let's talk about it. The good, it's really cute, like so cute. And it was really easy to take apart and reassemble. I really like the layered acrylic. It's a really cool touch and it's different. And I really enjoyed building it. The price, it gets down to $29. That's pretty awesome for a cool, really custom DIY bare bones keyboard. The switches felt good after they had a lot of love, even though they had some issues, which we'll talk about in the bad as well. It's controlled with VIA, which anytime we don't have to use a weird third party software, it's kind of a win in my book. And the keycaps, they look good, they felt good, and they sound good. I'm really happy with that. They were a nice touch. Let's talk about the bad. The switches, a bit fragile, a bit too fragile. I've never broken four switches ever. Like honestly, ever. Thousands of switches lubed, never had that issue. They feel really scratchy and they need a lot of love. Now the keyboard itself, it's a very specific theme and there's no way around it being cute, but it may not fit your aesthetic, but that's not really a bad thing, right? Honestly, I don't have a lot of bad to say about this keyboard. I really enjoyed it and it was a fun build. Just take note of don't add too much foam like I did and make sure if you're filming this, your camera doesn't die. But those are more bad for me, which I will work on going forward to make sure that it doesn't happen again. But if you made it this far, I just wanna say thank you. Thanks for watching and thank you for being a part of this community. That's really awesome. And if you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel a lot and it means a lot to me. And everything in this video is linked down below if you want to take a look at it or buy it. There are affiliate links, not all of them, but most of them. And that's it. It's the end. Thanks for watching and keep keyboarding.